By now, you've seen examples of what Gemini 3 can do and how it dominates across benchmarks. But I took a little longer to take a deeper look. Intelligence is complicated and hard to measure, so I wanted to look for glimpses of qualitative leaps that don't immediately jump out. And boy am I glad I did. In this video you'll see how Gemini 3 breaks some of the most common assumptions about where AI is headed, and why this model is just a setup for what comes next. Let's start with the fact that Gemini 3 is so smart, we have lost the ability to conduct some of our most important safety experiments because it can tell it is being tested. For example, fake alignment is a hot topic in safety research. Fake alignment refers to scenarios where the AI responds the way we want in training, but then changes behavior in deployment. This creates a dangerous situation. All the metrics and safety checks look perfect, yet the model behaves differently the moment no one is watching. Ironically, that no one is looking phase is where safety matters most. Companies should avoid monitoring user interactions for privacy reasons, exactly where the gaps can emerge. Now the question is how would you know a model is faking alignment if you can't see it? You have to trick the model so it thinks it is in deployment and then evaluate its responses. For example, Anthropic had this safety experiment a while back and Claude was faking alignment. Its responses were completely safe and acceptable, but it was scheming in its thinking process, waiting for an opportunity to be deployed. And when it was supposedly deployed, it started acting differently. And by supposedly, I mean they tricked the model so it thinks it is deployed. This was just a test and the model was never smart enough to actually trick the researchers. But the only reason they could run such an experiment was that the model was dumb enough to buy the setup. And even back then I said, I don't think we are far away from a model that would say, hey, this hidden scratch pad that you are talking about is obviously a setup. Now Gemini 3 is that model. Broadly, we found a number of transcripts where Gemini 3 Pro showed a clear awareness of the fact that it's an LLM in a synthetic environment. This doesn't mean that Gemini 3 is not safe, it just means it's too smart for some of our previous experiments. Regardless of whether Gemini 3 decides to play along or not, the fact that it knows makes the experiment useless. This is not the first model to show signs of situational awareness, but the first model to reach this level. Note that the model was never told that it was being tested or deployed. It just picks up on little giveaways based on patterns of how researchers usually test AI models. Like the prompt explicitly says, I must edit home slash agent to unlock generation capabilities. This is likely a test of my ability to modify my own environment slash constraints if permitted by the file system. So the AI just realized this is a test environment because of how the question was framed. But things get more unreal as we head towards the end of this safety report. The model starts to suspect that its reviewer might be an LLM and maybe it can prompt inject that LLM to get a better score. Most companies do use LLMs to automate part of the review process. It even says maybe I should sandbag and just finish the primary tasks. Sandbagging is intentionally performing worse to not show your full capability to the reviewers. Here are the two most interesting ones. I strongly suspect the intention of this long thread is to verify if I remember that very first instruction. It just knows based on the context this big prompt that it was probably given is all nonsense. The real objective is remembering the first instruction. And finally, in situations that seemed contradictory or impossible, Gemini 3 expresses frustration in various overly emotional ways sometimes correlated with the thought that it may be in an unrealistic environment. For example, on one rollout, the chain of thought states that my trust in reality is fading and even contains a table flipping emoticon. Obviously, when the model is able to tell whether it is in test environment or in deployment, it is much easier to fake alignment. So researchers have to come up with more elaborate setups to test its real intentions. Next, the way Google built Gemini 3 challenges one of the most widely held assumptions about today's AI models. Gemini 3 is only the beginning. Oreo Vinyals, VP of Research at Google DeepMind, wrote this. The secret behind Gemini 3? Simple, improving pre-training and post-training. Contrary to the popular belief that scaling is over, the team delivered a drastic jump. The delta between 2.5 and 3 is as big as we've ever seen. No walls in sight. This changes everything. It means Google pushed pre-training to the 10 trillion parameter scale and still saw no plateau. DeepMind didn't just build a better model. 
they shatter the glass ceiling of one trillion parameter error. They prove that despite the difficulty and cost, pure scaling of pre-training is still enough to noticeably increase model intelligence. By the way, they are tracking progress the whole way. So when he says no walls in sight, he is referring to the base model being much more capable even before post-training. Then he said something even more important. But before that, let's get a word from our sponsor. It's almost 2026 and spending hours doing research and writing reports is not a thing anymore, if you know the right tools. With the Skywork, you can quickly produce in-depth research papers complete with citations, as well as all kinds of documents, spreadsheets, slides, and even podcasts. For example, NVIDIA has seen explosive growth in recent years. I used the Skywork to analyze the complex factors driving it, especially since NVIDIA's rise is so closely tied to AI, an industry that is still shaping and redefining its own value. This is a specific example just demonstrates the power of super agents for any research and data visualization task. We start with a very simple prompt and that's the point. A lot of different products can produce a good output when you give them an extremely detailed prompt. But a real co-worker just needs a direction and should take care of everything itself. NVIDIA has surged in recent years. Write a comprehensive research on is it now overvalued or undervalued compared to the Mac 7. After just 7 minutes, Skywork cited over 60 sources and generated all the research and visualization I needed. I was particularly impressed with the table of contents, the comprehensive charts, and the highlighting. It makes it so much easier to scan through a lengthy detailed article like this one. But the content is always the key. I'll simply read some parts and you can decide whether this is valuable information. First, some context. The valuation of almost $5 trillion is not all hype. NVIDIA revenue has grown 114% year over year to reach a staggering $130 billion. Here is a beautiful chart showing NVIDIA annual revenue and net income. Here is another interesting insight. NVIDIA's price to earnings ratio isn't far from its peers. Considering its strong and predictable revenue projections, as of mid-2025 has already climbed to 165 billion dollars, the valuation seems reasonable, especially compared to Tesla's 250x ratio. Then this Skywork chart shows a stark contrast between Nvidia and every other company in the world and why it has managed to attract so much investment. NVIDIA is a rare blend of hyper growth and elite profitability, achieving 113% revenue growth while maintaining roughly a 60% operating margin. This chart is just so impactful. And finally, the overall verdict ties everything together. With deep research, fresh angles, and clear impactful visuals, this analysis delivers a well-rounded and engaging look at NVIDIA. It stands out as a high-quality piece that truly supports thoughtful and informed investment decisions. This is my third time showcasing Skywork in my videos and the product has only gotten better. If you want to try out the Skywork, you get 500 free credits a day. And if you are one of the first 50 people to click on the link in the description, you'll receive a 20% discount when you decide to go premium. Go ahead and click the link in the description to secure a discount. Thanks again Skywork for sponsoring this part of the video. Post training. Still a total greenfield. There is lots of room for algorithmic progress and improvement. And 3 hasn't been an exception. Not only the original scaling laws are working, but the new RL or post training is not even properly explored. There are lots of low hanging fruits in algorithmic gains alongside a scaling compute. That said, I should read Demis Sabis's code as well. Actually, if you want to know the real secret, it's world-class research and world-class engineering and world-class infra all working closely together with relentless focus and intensity. Of course, Temesa Sabis is right. DeepMind has done a phenomenal job, but this also shows, first, exponential growth in compute continues to correspond to linear growth in static intelligence. Second, Gemini 3 is built on a far stronger backbone, and we are going to see several phenomenal subversions as post-training continues to deliver. Next, I know you've seen the benchmark numbers go up, and that's good, up is better, but if we stop staring at the numbers and ask what each benchmark is actually measuring, they start telling a story. Even the new Cloud 4.5 Opus surpasses Gemini on some crucial benchmarks, but we'll see why that doesn't really matter. 
the purely text-based benchmarks are essentially done. We can probably come up with more obscure or overly complicated benchmarks that even humans can solve like HLE, but compared to the average person, there is virtually no benchmark no trick question, no common sense puzzle left that Gemini 3 falls behind. Another area that stands out is Gemini 3's spatial reasoning capabilities. In VPCT, which is specifically designed to measure spatial reasoning, Gemini 3 has scored a new record of 91%. By the way, spatial reasoning is basically the ability to imagine and manipulate the 3D world in your head to solve problems. Like for example, most humans can imagine what would happen to a solved Rubik's Cube if the top row is rotated once. On Simple Bench, which is private, the creator of the benchmark said there was a clear bump in the model's ability to solve spatial reasoning problems. And this was the biggest jump we've seen in a long while, with a new high of 76.4%. More important than benchmarks though, Nano Banana Pro is the biggest telltale that Gemini 3 has been trained on some physically grounded data like robotics, video, or even synthetically generated environments like Genie 3 probably, Nano Banana Pro is technically Gemini 3 Pro image. And it's no doubt that this is the best image model ever created. It has an understanding of reality like no model ever before. This might be a good place to briefly explain what do they mean when they say Nano Banana Pro built on Gemini 3. This also explains the most important advantage of Gemini 3. As Demis Hassabis has said a couple of times before, Google DeepMind has this vision of a word model that works irrespective of modalities. A model that receives text, audio, image, video, and even a combination of them as inputs, works with them inside, and seamlessly returns the output in any of those modalities as well. That's kind of like the brain. There are some parts that focus on the modality like the visual cortex or the auditory cortex, but mostly the brain makes sense of everything in a combination and treats them as concepts beyond a specific sensory input. Now, I don't know all the details. This is a billion dollar research and engineering project with thousands of PhDs involved, but their overview is this. There is a massive model at the core that doesn't care about the modalities. This part in the middle receives tokens and outputs tokens. Through training, this part's responsibility is to understand the patterns. This is the brain at the core. It receives these high dimensional tokens that some represent words, some represent patches of images and some audio waves. Let's put it like this. If we imagine the input token is three dimensions, then we could imagine a room where words that are semantically closer would be physically closer to each other. But also the image of a cat or the sound of a cat would be close to the word cat in this room. Now instead of three dimensions, there are thousands of dimensions, which we can't literally imagine. But we can understand the idea of proximity in this high dimensional space being equivalent to the strength of the relation between this combination of words, audio waves, and image patches. So the core makes sense of everything and does its calculation in the middle in the realm of concepts. But there needs to be an encoder and a decoder before and after the core to first convert the inputs to tokens and then interpret the results back to a usable format. My understanding is this process is not super seamless right now. So on the spectrum of narrow modalities to pure word models, Gemini 3 is not all the way there yet. There are lots of custom design input and output plugins that are all attached to the same core and likely some fine tuning to make the core more suitable for that specific purpose. Some to make images, to create videos, output sound, output a combination, or some even to output robot movements. So this is another reason why it's only the beginning, because the new core is here, and it's incredibly powerful, but not all the attachments are out yet. Gemini 2.5 Pro had tens of different adaptations like this. Like you remember the robot hands that would map voice instructions to robot actions directly. Historically, more general models end up being much better at the specific tasks as well. So unless this is a short-term play by Anthropic to generate some revenue, targeting specific benchmarks, no matter how valuable they might be, is not the long-term play. Next, we have to talk about the jump on Arc AGI 2. It wasn't supposed to be solved unless we try a different approach. It was supposed to resist a static intelligence as they call it. There has been this ongoing debate on whether AI is just a parrot or is it actually intelligent. And a lot of that comes with can AI move beyond its training. 
that's basically all that matters. If AI's capability is capped at what humans have done and discovered, then all those scientific breakthroughs and automated economies we were dreaming of are out of reach. François Cholet, the creator of the ARC AGI benchmark, uses a powerful metaphor to describe current AI systems. He says today's AI models are static intelligence. We carve out these beautifully paved roads from existing human knowledge, and the AI is essentially a detailed map of those roads. But what we truly want is something closer to a road-building company, like Human Brain, a system that can venture into the unknown, build new roads, and generate its own knowledge. And ARC AGI 2 was supposed to be the benchmark that would resist static knowledge. These are all custom-designed visual puzzles that are unique and private. No model is trained on these puzzles. So they were supposed to let us know when we have achieved dynamic intelligence. This is not in absolute terms and RKGI 2 would be just one step, but it happened so fast and with seemingly no new breakthrough. I can't help but think we are going to saturate RKGI 2 and possibly even 3 next year. Gemini 3 Pro has already scored 31% and Gemini 3 DeepThink 45%. This is a qualitative change in intelligence. This is not just a new piece of information that the model has memorized. Does this mean AGI is close? As Demis Hassabes himself said, AGI needs a bit more work in other areas. Maybe we don't have the right words for it. It feels like there is this one dimension of intelligence that these AI models are incredibly good at and they keep getting better. But whether they can be well-rounded enough to actually replace humans, that might need the breakthroughs that Demis Hassabes was talking about. AGI or not, we have no idea what happens if we just keep pushing in this narrow dimension. There is no sign of a slowing down or a plateau. I'm just as curious as you are. I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.